Hi there! In the last episode, I talked to you about the dry schema features, allowing you to easily validate data structures and attribute types in your Ruby applications. However powerful, the mostly used dry library is not dry schema. It's another gem built on top of that engine, which extends its functionality. It's a dry validation, and this is what I will talk today about. Dry validation is a data validation library for all kinds of Ruby applications that provides complete set of features you need to validate anything. Just to name a few cool things. It uses the schema for data structure and type validation, which is great on its own, but it extends the functionality to add business validations. It allows to inject external dependencies and write custom macros. Finally, it plays extremely well with dependency injection. I have recorded two episodes about how to do dependency injection in Ruby like a pro using dry libraries, so feel free to check them out. In the episode 14, you can learn about how dry container can solve some of the DI problems. And in the 15th episode, how to master DI in Ruby by leveraging the features of dry system. But coming back to the topic, when do you want to use dry validation gem? If you have projects where there is not too much of the business logic to be validated, chances are that dry schema standalone would be enough for you. However, when you want to add more advanced validation, like email uniqueness, validating attributes based on others provided, connect to external APIs or display powerful YAML-based error messages, then dry validation is the way to go. In Rise applications, in a lot of use cases, the built-in active model validations will be enough, but for validating nested structures, arrays, and type correctness, you might be interested in something more. In Hanami, you have access to both dry schema and dry validation gems, as dry schema is a subset of dry validation, and in actions, it's usually okay to just validate the data structures. Let me show you a few nice features specific for dry validation. And a quick disclaimer here, if you want to use dry validation in your project, this video shows just a subset of features. The whole functionality provided by their schema is omitted here, as I've covered that gem in two of my previous episodes. Check them out to have a complete overview of the validation power you get for free in Hanami applications and the power you can easily add to any Ruby app you will ever want to write. So let's go over a few things that are cool in dry validation. As one addition, to built-in structure and type check, dry validation allows you to define custom validation rules. Here I have a contract that validates the start and the end date of my reservation. The param section is a simple validation that is provided by dry schema. It checks the input and applies the basic transformations if applicable to ensure I will work with data of expected types. If this basic validation fails, program stops there and does not even reach the advanced validation rules, which is an extremely nice boost to the performance. Only when the basic validation passed, we reach the advanced validation rule, which compares two different attributes and returns the error response in case of expectations not being met. Now I can use it by creating the contract and calling it with some attributes and checking the error responses. All that works out of the box as one could expect from the modern validation library. So let's move on to the next feature. In case you have a very common validation scenario, like email validation, that should be the same across your whole application, you might save some code application by extracting this validation rule to a macro. Here I register a macro, which contains just a simple format validation rule. Unless the value matches given format, I return the error message. Now in my contract class, I can just validate email format and the code will work out of the box. This makes the syntax extremely easy to use while keeping the gem very simple concept wise. However, it's not the end yet. As an addition, you might inject the external dependencies into the contract. For example, you might pass here in the repository object or active record model to check if given user has already subscribed to your newsletter. Now I can pass the repo to the contract using a dependency injection and validate freely the uniqueness of my email. 
That's awesome, isn't it? This works perfectly in Hanami applications, where you have dependency injection integrated as the main way to manage dependencies. However, I have used it in Rise apps in the past too, and it worked great with active record objects. The next feature I wanted to show you is the fact that drive validation is extendable. Drive validation comes with two extensions built in, which you can enable if you want, but you can also write your own whenever you need them. Here is an example of Monads extension, which makes your contract compatible with Dry Monads. I strongly recommend checking that one too. I've covered it in episode 7, which is the most popular episode I've recorded so far. If you want to know more about Dry Validation, I recommend checking out the Dry 5 YouTube series by Luca Guidi, which is a nice intro to this gem. And if you want to get the always up-to-date information, make sure you follow the Dry RB on Twitter and visit the gems documentation. Dry Validation is an amazing library. It's the most popular dry gem released so far, and there is a reason for this. The funny thing is that people often use it in rights applications, skipping strong parameters and active model validations completely, as this one is more safe and faster. Unfortunately, this is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and stay in touch to get updates about my upcoming content. If you want to see more content in this fashion, subscribe to my YouTube channel, newsletter, and follow me on Twitter. I want to especially thank my recent sponsors, Salon.com, Brandon Waver, and Ascenda Loyalty. By helping me with monthly GitHub sponsorship to create this content, together we really start making a difference in the open source world. Thank you all for your support. And remember, if you want to support my work even without money involved, the best you can do is to like, share, and comment on my episodes and discussion threads. Help me add value to the open source community. Also, if you know other great gems you wish me to talk about, leave a comment with hashtag suggestion and I will gladly cover them in the future episodes. As usual, here you can find two of my previous episodes. Thank you all for supporting my channel. You are awesome and have a nice rest of your day.